Welcome, welcome, welcome to this spooky list of comics. I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, and boy was I spooked after reading the titles listed here. I'm gonna need a lot of nightlights around me in order to sleep tonight, so please, if you have any spares, send them my way. There are so many different topics when it comes to horror, and for me, the most meaningful, scary monsters are those that embody real life horrors that exist within us. In this list, I'll be letting you know a little bit about the things that creep me out as well. So I think it's only fair you tell me about what scares you when it comes to the horror genre in the comments below. What are you most afraid of? All right, deep breath, safety pals and blankets at the ready. Time to face those fears. Number 10, Colder. Written by Paul Tobin and illustrator Juan Fiera. You don't even have to read these comics to be creeped out. You just have to look at the covers of this series. Check them out. Seriously, I'll wait. Okay, how are you? Feeling good? Feeling sick? If you're okay to continue, let me tell you more about what's inside the comic. This series falls to Clan Thomas, a man who has the abilities to cure others' madness at the expense of his own body temperature. Although the Clan does not get ill or feel any physical pain, he does struggle with the state of his own mental health. As his body temperature continues to drop, it seems the Clan is fighting to race against time. The best thing about this series, though, is not even the ingenious story, but the villain, Nimble Jack, who feeds on others' madness. He is just maybe the creepiest guy I have ever seen in comics. Or in anything. Ever. Number 9, Fatal. Written by Ed Brubaker, art by Sean Phillips, colors by David Stewart. If you love Lovecraft, this horror is for you. The story follows Joe, a woman who is constantly running from a cult that worship gods similar to the Great Old Ones, those of the Cthulhu mythos. This cult appears to be obsessed with hunting down Joe and will stop at no means necessary. Joe is a femme fatale right out of the 1930s, but Literally. The story we follow shows Joe in many different time periods, though mysteriously she always appears unaged, untouched by time. Joe also struggles with having a bewitching effect on the male sex, as men often irresistibly and helplessly fall in love with her, only for them to meet some untimely end. We follow Joe on the run as she tries to find a safe place and unravel the mysteries around her. Number 8, Witches by Scott Snyder. Beautiful, spooky art by Jock and amazing, amazing amazing, amazing color by Matt Hollingsworth. Seriously, this story is brilliant. The look of the comics is fantastic, but the colors. You could just read this comic for the colors. So, okay, what's it about? As the title aptly implies, this is a witch story. A young girl named Sailor and her family are forced to move after Sailor's bully Annie mysteriously disappears and Sailor is suspected of Annie's murder by the town's residents. Harsh. The family moves to the small town of Litchfield, New Hampshire and mayhem ensues. You see, this town is steeped in the supernatural and has close ties to a group of witches. Now I don't want to give anything away, but I will say this is a story that is a very unique take on this specific type of monster. Seriously, read it. Number 7, Outcast, written by Robert Kirkman, art by Paul Assazetta, with colors by Elizabeth Brettweiser. All right, YouTube. As I host and we get to know each other better, there is something I want you to know about me. I'm terrified of possession. To me, it is the scariest thing. Films like Exorcist, Babadook, Hereditary, they just give me the capital C creeps. Needless to say, I could not create this list without touching on the very disturbing subject of possession. And so I give you Outcast. Not to be confused with the music group, Outcast. This series follows Kyle Barnes, a guy who has a history with demonic possession, abilities surrounding it, and as a result, pretty much runs into it at every turn. This series involves a lot of people getting possessed and a lot of creepy grins. Especially from children. Like, creepy. Probably due to the success of Kirkman's series Walking Dead and its show, Outcast has also been given a television series, so feel free to check that out as well if my type of spooky is also 
your type of spooky. Number 6, Torso by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Andreco. Torso is more than a horror comic. It is also a true crime series, which in my opinion makes it even scarier, especially because the criminal it is about was never apprehended. Dun dun dun. This tale focuses on the investigation of a string of serial murders committed in Cleveland in the 1930s. The killing shared a link. They all involved dismemberment. With many of the murders believed to have the cause of death to be dismemberment. Ergo, the killer was dubbed the Cleveland Torso Murderer. Torso is interesting because it doesn't just tell a story, it also uses direct images, documents, and reports from the case, which are then interlaced with the story. If you are a fan of this comic series, you might be excited to know a film series is in the works which would revolve around Elliot Ness, famed lawman, leader of the Untouchables, and one of the lead investigators on the Cleveland Torso Murderer case. Number 5, Juan no Tani, written by Masaki Nakayama. This comic series is an anthology of short, scary stories based around urban legends. If stories like this used to keep you up at night just wondering about them, Prepare to get spooked. A lot of these stories are short and involve a lot of jump scares and scary faces staring at you. These are the stories that will leave you looking over your shoulder for the rest of the night. And possibly the day. Approach with caution if you have an active imagination and be warned, I find the stories get scarier as you read on. Number 4, Severed. Written by Scott Snyder and Scott Tuft with art by Attila Futaki. In this series we follow Jack, a young boy who runs away from home after receiving a letter from his absent father, asking Jack to join him on the road. Jack of course has always dreamed of travelling cross country with his estranged father and eagerly leaves home to set off on an adventure. And that's where the story gets dark. Jack runs into a traveling salesman who is far more than he seems. The artwork is graphic and the story revolves around cannibalism. The two go hand in hand to make Severed an unforgettable series. In the best and the worst way possible. This series also features a villain who seriously freaks me out and who will assuredly keep you awake at night. Number 3, Uzumaki by Junji Ito. So here's the thing, all comics by Ito are terrifying. So know that and don't look back. This manga series revolves around spirals. Get it? Revolves? It's about a town where people are obsessed and paranoid about spirals. The comic centers on a young high school couple, Kiri Goshima and Shuchi Saito. Kiri becomes affected by the town's curse when her hair starts to curl. Her hair drains Kiri's energy and attempts to strangle her anytime she tries to cut it. Shuchi manages to cut her hair off and save Kiri from the curse, but the two remain unable to escape the town. Even when they leave, they end up returning. The story is an interesting and disturbing exploration of the power of tradition, time, and the meaning and feeling of infinity. Number 2, Harrow County, written by Cullen Bunn and Tyler Crook, with art and colors also by Crook. Emmy is a young teenager living in a small town where 18 years ago, a witch was burned at the stake. When Emmy begins to have strange visions of haints, haints are basically ghosts, spirits, spooks, otherworldly beings. Emmy soon discovers she too may become a witch and also discovers that her father plans to kill her. If you don't yet believe this comic is worth a read, let me tell you my favorite part. At one point, Emmy goes into the woods and finds and befriends the skinless boy, half of which is a boy's flayed skin. Also, there is the other half of the boy running around the woods, skinless. So yeah, it's a pretty freaky kind of spooky. That being said, this is a comic that is worth a read simply for the art in it. Crook's use of watercolors and his ability to paint emotion on characters' faces in the imagery is hypnotizing. You could get lost in just the art of the comics. Number 1, The Enigma of Emigira Fault by Junji Ito. Another story by Ito, this one is more of a short story which explores the idea of loneliness and isolation and the compulsive influence of curiosity. It also creeps me out. A lot. This comic is an extra story that was included at the end of the feature length horror series by Ito entitled Gaio. Awaki and Yoshida are hiking up in the mountains, hoping to get a look at the fault in a mountainside which a recent earthquake has exposed. The fault is comprised of an amazing amount of human shaped holes in the side of the mountain that appear to be bottomless. Disturbingly, people start hearing these holes call to them and disappear in what they describe as their perfect outline etched into the mountain, their hole. I won't spoil the ending, but I will say be prepared to get spooked by this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my countdown of the top 10 scariest horror comics, and I hope you can sleep tonight. Are your palms sweaty? Cause 
because mine are sweaty. If you enjoyed this list, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and kindly click that subscribe. I promise, no jump scares. And before you go, if you have a horror comic that you think I should check out next, please share it in the comments below. This is Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, reminding you to stay spooked, fellow nerds.